Once again, it is your host, Arachnid Soul. Today, the topic is video game cheaters, and I'm joined by a man who doesn't cheat. Rumble is back on the podcast. Hey, what's up? You see, you would debate me on the whole cheating thing because you think Canadians all cheat. <laughs> see, I was trying not to out you as a Canadian. I was going to open up by saying, hey, what's going on? I said, no, hey. don't do it. It'll be a giveaway. You are racist against Canadians. <laughs> no, I like my Canadians. I'm a big Bret Hart fan. <laughs> Cheating's been a big issue in almost every game that comes out now. As an example, we've got is the division. It's just rampant. Uh, on there cheating in general to me is a problem with the person themselves it's a definite correlation with your character if you are a cheater clearly you don't have great judgment <laughs> let's just say that it might... not only are you cheating yourself but also it kind of shows that you lack empathy for other people i mean there's exactly. other people that want to get onto a game and in a fair competitive stance and all of a sudden you've got the aim bot and yep. every time you, for days. every time you pull the trigger it's headshots nonstop. Yep. what are you getting out of that besides just being a dick oh yeah at the end of the day you are not good at the game the cheats are great the cheats are fantastic at this game but if you turn those cheats off how good are you the worst player without cheats is probably going to kill you because now you don't even know how the game works anymore. You really don't because you've become so reliant on all these cheats that you've been putting in place. It just saddens me because you've forgotten what it is to be a gamer at this point. You're there for the entertainment. You're there to have fun. But when you feel the need to, you have to win so badly that you have to put something in place to make it easier for you to win, there's something wrong. I grew up gaming on console, and now I do some gaming on console and some on handheld Game Boy Advance SP. I'll pull it out and play some Bomberman or some Fire Pro. But generally, I play on PC. Right. I forget that a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about modding games. They Because oh, yeah. they play multiplayer it's games, and they get upset with me. I'm like, why are you upset? And then I realize, oh, they think I'm one of those aim botters or the cheaters. Yeah. But I've never modded a multiplayer game. The games that I mod are Skyrim, and even then, I don't mod it in a way to make it easier for myself. It's dumb stuff where I'm like, you know, I wish I could get a different hairstyle, and then I right. say, oh, there's a mod that adds 50 new hairstyles. Right. If you took that game and threw in multiplayer, I would take the stuff off. It wouldn't change the game at all. Maybe I've added some E and B stuff to change the lighting. But I have no interest in going out and getting a game and all of a sudden straight away, I can't take damage. It's you right. know, full time God mode for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Well, that's the other sad side effect to all these cheaters who mod their game to cheat is the moment you mention the word mod, they immediately make you a cheater. And it's like, no, I altered the game slightly to make it more enjoyable for me. You know, like graphically, it made it better or it added more houses to a city so it looked more real. It added NPCs to said city to make them it feel like a real environment. It's just sad that it's gotten to the point where you can't even say mod without someone saying, oh, you're a cheater. When I'm playing a game with you and you're doing well <laughs> and we're going up against each other, I'll always joke that you're using the Game Shark game, or the yep, Game, game Genie. Shark. The orange game genie that had the handle on it where you had to take it out and blow it under your shirt and then stick it back in, but not too far because then it wouldn't connect. And then people are telling you hit the side of the console when it's on and, hey, go get a Q-tip. Just all sorts of nonsense. Finally, you get it working, but the damn thing wouldn't even save your codes. Yeah. So when one of your parents walked by a little bit too hard and it reset the thing, you're like, oh, shit, I guess Son we're not going to finish. We're not finishing Mega Man 19 today. <laughs> Batman was one of the hardest games ever to play. It was ridiculous how hard that game was. But then you add like Super Jump. And you're like, wow, this game just got 100 times easier. <laughs> that and the Ninja Turtles game? Oh, the first one? Oh my gosh. You could probably remember the stage that made you want to quit the game forever. The sewer. The sewer is probably the worst game design I had ever experienced as a kid. That was the first time I ever went, oh, I don't want to play Ninja Turtles anymore. And it's literally the second level, like the second area of the game. You finish the little city and then you go into the sewer and you're like, oh, I just got to swim through here. And then we get to the next area. 
honestly, I cannot remember anything beyond that because that gave me nightmares for the rest of my childhood life right there. Yeah, there was <laughs> weird electric current. It just didn't make any sense. And then it was just near impossible to get through the levels. It was the first time that no matter which turtle you used, you were dying. Whereas all the earlier levels, you had different turtles and they all had their little unique things and one would make it easier to get through a level while another one might be a little more difficult, but you could get through the level. But that one, it didn't matter which turtle you used. That was the equivalent of when you played the Battletoads game and you're like, okay, it's like Double Dragon, we're going through there. And then you got to the infamous and they put in every Battletoads, I called it the grape level, where you're on the jet ski and you gotta hit ramps and dodge walls and not land in the grapes. Oh yeah, yep. And, and that was always the final level to me on any Battletoads game. And it was all pixel perfect. You, no, sorry, you had to start the jump pixel perfect to land the ju jump pixel perfect. So annoying. Ugh. Well, I remember playing it on my Game Boy, the old <laughs> mustard screen one, mm -hmm. and it's going so fast and the screen's not that big. I've got about one one hundredth of an inch of warning as something pops on the screen towards me because you couldn't speed up or slow down it just went fast and you had to memorize and there was no saving so the only way you really memorize it was to keep getting to that yep. level and then dying and hoping you learned where one more obstacle would be and yep, maybe if you did it. that <laughs> enough times and had it memorized you know you might even be able to look away and just put yep. some music on and just groove with it <laughs> and make it work that wasn't cheating, that was memorization. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what all the old bosses and games were. It was like, okay, he does this three times, and then when Mike Tyson's eyes cross, he hit him. And you know what? That's another thing that makes me sad about cheating nowadays is games are easier than they ever were. Like, go back and play half the games you played as a kid. They are difficult as hell. The controls were janky, and we had three lives usually to get through a level. Otherwise, you started the fuck over. Well, I remember as a little kid, my favorite game, the original Gauntlet game, yep. that game was so difficult. Oh, yeah. No one in the history of the world, someone's going to comment, I beat the game. Yeah, well, shut up. Yeah. For the sake of argument in this podcast, no one in the history of the world will ever be able to beat that game. It was so difficult. And then at some point you figure out, you know, I'm just standing in the same spot and it's not me moving around the mazes. It's as I turn, the maze itself is moving and there's ghosts and there's keys and... <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm glad that Steam now has the embarrassing and permanent vac ban if somebody's oh. caught cheating on one of these multiplayer games. It's the scarlet letter of gaming. You cannot have it removed. There's no one you can talk to at Steam who will hear your argument. It's just one of those things where it's always on your profile. For your sake, if you have the vac ban, do not ever go into a forum and try to ask a question about any game because people <laughs> always look at your profile. And if you have the back ban, that's the gaming equivalent of being like a pedophile in terms of how you're going to be treated by the community. <laughs> yep. Definitely, definitely. Well, they even added that kind of uh, treatment to uh, the division most recently is th they are now permabanding even first time uh, offenders. They've done it now with uh, Division just did it, Overwatch just did it. it it's got to happen, though. It's just got to happen. When the playing field is no longer even, they we don't want you there. I don't want you in my game. I really don't. Like, there's nothing worse than knowing somebody's cheating. And it's usually obvious. It's so obvious, especially when you go from one game where you're doing extremely well to the next one where you're just getting demolished by somebody who just isn't doing well in my opinion like you can see it. it it's just obvious when someone can sit in one area as an example like call of duty we'll use that as an example because i've seen it a million times in my lifetime a guy does not move from a single spot in the entire game and you're you're trying to figure out why he's getting so many kills so you finally put yourself in position to get killed by him because you know you're not going to kill him you can try, but it's not going to happen. And then you realize it's because he managed to glitch himself into the wall where you can't even shoot him and he can shoot you. And all he has to do is line up the shot and you, it's a headshot every time. The aim bots, the people using the lag glitches, so they're oh. jumping around and it's like, well, that's nice that you're shooting there, but I'm not there anymore. That is our time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 
It has been your host, Arachnid Soul. I want to hear from everybody in the comment section. Like the video and share it on social media so we'll get some buzz going. And also in the description of this video, all of Rumble's information, I want you to go check him out. He's an awesome guy, even though he's Canadian. Mm. <laughs> and we will catch you girls, you guys, and everyone else. And by the way, I actually do love Canadians. Later. <laughs> I hope so.